Okay, we are ready to begin. Welcome everyone to a Major Tom and Amazon Future Forward webinar, Rethink Your Amazon Strategy. So my name is Mitchell. I'm VP Strategy here at Major Tom. I joined the agency about three years ago in Vancouver, where I was brought on to create the agency's first social media division. I'm broadcasting here from Toronto, where I now lead our East teams, and I oversee our larger marketing strategy engagements. Today, I am going to be your webinar MC. Hi, everyone. I'm Devin Bowman, lead Amazon strategist here at Major Tom. I have over five years of digital marketing experience on the agency side, focused in media buying across dozens of channels, and I now specialize in e-commerce marketing, focused predominantly on Amazon here at our office in Toronto. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Danielle Wolf. I'm the Senior Marketing Program Manager at Amazon. I've been with Amazon for about four and a half years, um, worked across a bunch of different roles within Amazon. But for the last two years, I've been focused on the Amazon attribution beta product that I'm really excited to talk to you all about today. Wonderful. So we have a great team for you today. Uh, I'll start with a really quick elevator pitch about Major Tom. We're an integrated digital first agency offering strategy, marketing, creative and development services to a wide variety of clients across North America. As a full service agency, we work to understand our clients' needs at the organizational level and then create and execute marketing strategies to help them succeed. Our work with Amazon, I think, is one of the most exciting areas that Major Tom has entered into over the last several years. Uh, and as we've seen the significant rise in Amazon's influence, we've been able to reimagine e-commerce for all of our clients. Uh, and calling it a game changer would honestly be an understatement. So we're really excited to share some of our perspectives with you today. A few quick housekeeping items. This session will be recorded. It'll be emailed out to you uh, and also emailed out to those who registered but were not able to make it last minute. Uh, you'll be hearing from us after the webinar as well with uh, some takeaway items as well as a special offer. Uh, so please make sure you keep an eye out on your inbox for that. And at the end of this session, we'll be doing a Q&A. So we're going to ask you to use the Zoom Q&A function for this and not the chat function. Uh, that'll be a little bit easier for us to moderate that. Um, so at the end of this, I will be moderating the Q&A. And I will pass it over to Devin for the first part of the presentation. Thank you, Mitchell, for that great introduction. Today, we're going to be going through how to run an account health check, how to do a checkup of your product listings and what to look out for, how to successfully run full funnel advertising on Amazon. And finally, we'll conclude with new Amazon attribution technologies to feed into off Amazon PPC advertising across all stages of the, of the funnel. One of the first ways to revamp your Amazon strategy starts at the account health level. This is an area that often gets overlooked by most sellers on Amazon but it can be easily found in your seller central under performance and account health. A failure to keep tabs on your overall account health can result in missed opportunities and even temporary listing closures due to unnoticed poor performance. So it's really important to be aware of this area in your account and check back on it regularly. Within the account health section, you can find valuable information such as your late shipment rate, this is especially important if you're doing FBM and shipping products yourselves. Consistently late shipments will definitely mean that you don't qualify for premium shipping, which is the next important metric to the right. This basically allows you to qualify for FBM Prime, which is extremely challenging um, and exciting to do so. So you'll want to keep tabs on if you're eligible for this or not. Next is your order defect rate, which consists of three distinct metrics, negative feedback, a to Z guarantee claims and chargeback claims. A high order defect rate means that a high ratio of your products were returned due to being damaged or missing components within them. So again, if you're getting a high um, order defect rate coming back to you, being able to notice this and make any changes before it gets out of hand is extremely important. Finally, the voice of the customer is where you can actually read customer feedback and make appropriate updates to your physical products and product listings. 
Knowing this area of your account can help you to identify issues such as mislabeled products, damaged products, or defective or inaccurate product pages. It's very important to take action on consecutive poor customer experience ratings to avoid, to avoid your product listings being suppressed or even closed. Amazon is very diligent about providing a positive customer experience across all of their listings. So if they're finding that they consistently get negative feedback on something, they might even shut down your product listing preemptively. If you log into your account and you find that this has already occurred, simply click in to resolve the direct issue on the product listing. The final section of your account health check is where you can examine whether or not you qualify for Amazon subscribe and save options. On the customer side, Amazon subscribe and save allows you to set up repeat purchases on a specific schedule to avoid having to take the time to reorder every week or every month. In doing so, you can get discounts of up to 15% of your purchases. And just this convenience is really, really nice for products that get used on a very quick cycle, such as pet food, baby products, or cleaning supplies. As a seller on Amazon, qualifying for Amazon subscribe and save program allows you to gain consistent repeat sales, encourage customer loyalty, and build further brand awareness. If you're interested in checking out your account health and seeing if you qualify, first be, for, first be sure that you fit all of Amazon's requirements. You have to be brand registered, so have a valid trademark number, be running FBA, not FBN, and have an account in good standing. Again, this goes back to those account health metrics that we just touched on. So what your fulfillment history is, your rate of being in stock, your sales performance, what product category you're in, and your average selling price as well. If you're looking for a more extensive audit, Major Tom is offering a free account health check by our in-house Amazon strategist. This includes a deep dive into the data, an analysis of your account, recommendations for improvement, and a final report that you'll receive at the end. This is typically valued at $750, so it's a really great opportunity to take advantage of for a limited time. After the webinar, we'll be sending out a follow-up email on more information on how to sign up. The next simple and effective way to revamp your Amazon products and get a notch up in organic rankings is to run an audit and ensure you're following Amazon's best practices to rank and convert. One of the most important factors that affects your rankings and conversion rate is your product title. Out of all features on your product listing, it ranks most heavily in Amazon's algorithm and it's the first thing that users see in search results. Longer product titles often rank higher, so aim for a title that's between 80 to 200 characters long. Put the most important keywords for the consumer at the beginning and fit any additional keywords for the algorithm at the end. The logic is that humans start reading at the beginning of the sentence, but they'll often skim the rest of it, but they'll never start reading halfway through the sentence. So really making sure that you're focused on the consumer first and the algorithm second will do you very well. With so many keywords and information in your title, you'll want to ensure that you also use pipes or dashes to break up those keywords and make it easier to read. And if you're using numbers anywhere in your title, be sure to write them as numerals, as shown to the right. The second most important factor for both the consumer and Amazon's algorithm in your success are your key features or the bullet points that appear underneath your product title. Best practices for writing key features include capitalizing and summarizing each bullet point to start, like we did to the right here, writing important selling points for the consumer, while also inserting relevant keywords for Amazon within them, and not including any ending punctuation, so no period at the end of the sentences. Finally, one of the most important areas to convert a customer are your product images. The top percentage of listings on Amazon have five to eight images per product. And while having more than five images matters to the algorithm, the content of the images matters to the consumer. So if a customer were to physically pick up this product, how would they look at it and what would they do with it? Based on this, you should include some product shots from all angles so a customer would be able to see what it looked like if they were to pick it up in store 
So top, bottom, front, back, left, and right. Showing what the packaging looks like is extremely important for the customers, including lifestyle shots. Um, so what it looks like if a user were to actually be utilizing the product. And any important selling points, such as sizing guides, ingredients lists, or setup instructions will really do you well. Once your product listings have been fully optimized, you're ready to start sending more traffic to them. If you miss this vital step, you risk spending a lot of media dollars to send traffic to a product listing that just isn't set up to convert. So once this is done, you can start setting up your full funnel advertising campaigns, both on and off Amazon. Full funnel advertising means reaching users throughout each stage of their buyer journey. At the top of the funnel, this means using Amazon sponsored brand campaigns and paid social campaigns to drive awareness and consideration of your product. In the decision making stage, reaching users who are actively searching for your product via Amazon sponsored product campaigns and paid search campaigns. Finally, once a, pro once a purchase has actually been made, maintaining customer retention through sponsored display campaigns or Amazon remarketing campaigns. Let's dig into each of these opportunities a little bit more. At the top of the funnel, using sponsored brand campaigns to reach users in the awareness stage. On Amazon, this means targeting specific product categories or individual products that you want your ads to appear on. In this case, your ad is a grouping of multiple products with a written headline and logo and ads direct either to a unique custom landing page or to your Amazon storefront. Running Facebook and Instagram ads is also a great way to reach users in this awareness stage. In the middle of the funnel, using sponsored brand campaigns to target specific search queries allows you to reach users who are in the process of considering your product. Your ads will appear at the very top of search results and are a grouping of multiple products with a written headline and logo again. At the bottom of the funnel, running sponsored product campaigns ensure that you capture users who are actively researching for your product. In this campaign type, you also target by specific search queries, but your ads appear directly within search results, not at the top um, headline. In this case, your ads are going to be a single product listing and will not have a headline or a logo in them. Another great way to reach users in this decision making phase is to run a Google or Bing search campaign and target bottom of the funnel keywords driving to your Amazon listing or to your Amazon storefront. Finally, probably one of the most important aspects to any marketing strategy is your retention strategy. So running remarketing campaigns to retarget users who have either viewed your product listing or similar product listings is a really great way to accomplish this. When you run any advertising campaign on Amazon and within Amazon, there's no conversion tracking or pixels that you need to set up. Everything is tracked directly in-house. But to run any off Amazon PPC campaigns and direct to Amazon, there's historically been great challenges in um, attributing sales directly back to those campaigns. Historically, to track sales within Amazon from non-Amazon digital marketing tactics, you had the following options. You could use a tracking URL from your Amazon storefront page. However, in doing this, you would have to direct traffic to your storefront instead of your product listing. The second option would be to run a coupon code and promote it off Amazon, such as on paid social or paid search. But this would mean that you would have to discount your product and always set a start and end date of the promotion, which means that it wouldn't run um, ongoingly. Finally, you could use a social media promo code, but that would also require you to put your product on sale for a period of time. So as you can see, there are really caveats with each of these. And if you don't want to discount your product or you don't want to direct your storefront, you'll likely be blind to the success of a lot of your off Amazon marketing initiatives. Up until now, I'm pleased to announce that Amazon just launched a new attribution technology, which is now in beta for all registered brand owners and vendors in the US and UK. 
This is something that our founding partner, Chris Breeks, is extremely excited about, which will allow us to track back sales from other marketing channels, such as email, Google, and Instagram ads. Overall, this will really allow advertisers to have a complete picture of which off Amazon campaigns are truly driving success. I'll now hand it over to Danielle at Amazon to walk us through this new and exciting feature. Thanks, Devin. Um, hi, everyone. As I mentioned before, my name is Danielle. I lead marketing and partnerships for Amazon Attribution. So I'm going to start this section just telling you a little bit more about what Amazon Attribution is and how it works. And then towards the end, I'll get a little bit more into use cases that our early beta participants have used Amazon Attribution for. Um, and then I'll go into a case study. So um, as Devin mentioned, Amazon Attribution is a beta product and it's specifically a measurement solution. And it helps sellers and vendors on Amazon really measure the impact that their non-Amazon marketing campaigns are having on driving shopping activity and growing sales on Amazon. And we can measure across search, social, display, email, and video channels. And you can use this tool for paid channels such as Google search or Facebook ads, but you can also use it for your organic channels like your company's Facebook or Instagram page or a blog post or email list. Um, so in terms of how Amazon attribution really works, it really enables you to do three key things. As I talked about in my last slide, the first one is measure. It enables you to measure across all of those off Amazon channels to really learn what's working for you and what's not working for you. And you can tie each of those non Amazon campaigns to different success metrics. Um, the next part is optimize. So with Amazon attribution, you're able to measure your cross channel advertising campaigns based on what you know, and then use those insights to optimize based on what you learn is working and not working. So with Amazon attribution, you start to see like, click data within four to six hours and Amazon conversion data within 24 hours. And that really enables you to make optimizations and shift to strategies that are working while the campaign is still live versus having to wait till the end of the campaign uh, report when it's too late to take any action on it. Um, and then finally, the last pillar here is plan. So using those insights that you learn from your past campaign performance, you're able to build benchmarks off of your own performance and use the strategies that you know are working well for you going into your next campaign. Um, so earlier in the presentation, Devin kind of went through the buyer's journey, but I'll talk about it a little bit more here and how it specifically relates to Amazon attribution. So the first section is awareness. So awareness, it's really important to kind of understand how many people your campaign is reaching and also which customers are engaging with those ads that you're placing. Um, so for awareness, we use clicks in order to measure it. and I'll give you kind of an example. So let's say that you have a Facebook ad that's driving to your store on Amazon. You can use clicks to understand how many people clicked on your uh, Facebook ad to, in order to get to your store page. Um, so the next section of the customer journey is consideration. We consider consideration is a really important part of the customer journey to focus on considering how much time and effort people are putting into product research these days. Um, so Basically, we for uh, sorry for consideration, we uh, use detail page view metrics, um, and that's how many people click through your, your ad to go to a product detail page to learn a little bit more about your product. So going back to that same example, let's say someone clicks on your Facebook ad and then gets to your store page. You might be curious to know how many people then click through on specific products to research it a little bit more. And product detail pages are specifically designed to help with the, this customer research process, right? They have customer reviews, they have different uh, pictures and videos and how to's on how to use the product. So people going to your detail pages is a strong indication that they're curious to learn more about your products on Amazon. Next up, we have add to carts. So it's just great to know that once someone adds a product to your cart, um, that they're really showing that purchase intent. Um, and it's a really strong signal in regards to consideration. And then finally, we close the customer decision journey loop by providing purchase and sales metrics. So here goes through some of the early use cases that uh, beta participants have leveraged Amazon attribution for historically. 
Um, so you can definitely learn and do different A-B tests to understand what specific strategies are working well for you and kind of shift your budget accordingly in order to grow your business on Amazon. So this first one, um, you can maximize channel impact. So you could learn across all of your off Amazon digital media strategies, which channels and which publishers are driving the most success for you. The next um, popular use case that we've seen is in ensuring that you're reaching the right audiences and which of those audiences are in different stages of the customer journey. So you can put Amazon tags, Amazon attribution tags across your different audience segments and see how they resonate um, with your products across different publishers or different channels. The next one is uh, creative, um, ensuring that your creatives resonate. So you can test different messages and different um, product images in your ads and see which ones are resonating with your customers the most, again, across those different um, channels. And finally, you can create engaging experiences. So you can conduct different landing page tests and see what the result is if you drive to a product detail page versus if you drive to a store page. So now we'll go into a success story. So Midwest Home for, Homes for Pets was looking to grow its business on Amazon. They experimented with a variety of marketing tactics at growing Amazon sales, and they wanted to get insight into how those tactics were contributing to sales growth on Amazon. So what they did was they registered for Amazon attribution in order to get the conversion metrics that they needed in order to optimize their non-Amazon marketing strategies. So what they did was they tagged across their Google and Bing search campaigns and they tagged across the specific ad groups and they were able to measure which specific, they put tags across their specific um, different categories. So whether it be pet beds or pet crates, because they really wanted to know kind of which categories customers were interested in buying more. And they also wanted to know across Google and Bing, which strategy or which channel um, was doing the best job at driving sales for them. So by getting at these learnings, we were able to, sorry, the next slide. Um, so with insight into which channels and which publishers and which categories um, their customers were interested in, they were able to shift their media budget and bid on those keywords accordingly. And they were able to see a 32% increase in ROAS. Um, so before I close out this section, I'm going to go into a few frequently asked questions that we get for Amazon attribution. The first one is who can use it. Um, so today it is available to professional sellers enrolled in Amazon brand registry and vendors that sell their products in the US on Amazon, as well as vendors that sell their product in the UK. Um, we are working really hard to make it available to customers that sell their products on .ca or in Canada, um, we're anticipating that to be available towards the end of this year. Um, the next one is, which channels can I measure with Amazon Attribution? You can measure, as I mentioned earlier on, you can measure across both paid and organic channels. Really anywhere you could put a click through URL is somewhere you can put an Amazon Attribution tag to start measuring the success of it. Um, and you can measure across social, display, video, email campaigns. And then finally, how much does Amazon attribution cost? There's no cost at all. Um, and we have no plans to add any cost at any point in the near future. Okay, so if you are ready to get started with Amazon attribution, a few things to keep in mind. To register, you can visit, um, we have an Amazon advertising website and we have a products uh, section on the top navigation bar and you can go to the Amazon attribution page and then you can register and your account is created right there. Um, and it's also important to note that the email address is used to register for Amazon attribution, as I mentioned, must have a brand owner status. So um, if you're an agency or you are a partner of a brand that's helping with their strategy, once the brand owner gets access, you're then able to invite those agency partners to help manage the attribution measurement. And once you've registered and if you're eligible, you'll receive an email invitation from Amazon Advertising DSP support. Um, eligible sellers will receive it just due to kind of how we onboard and create your account. Sellers will receive the invitation immediately, but vendors, it takes um, about two weeks to kind of review and validate the account. And then finally, once you've received your invitation and click through to accept, You'll be able to register uh, for a webinar or take the Amazon attribution course within their learning console to help you learn more about how to set up your first campaign and begin measuring using Amazon attribution.
Great. That is a lot of very helpful information all at once. Um, there have been some questions popping up throughout the presentation, so I will dive into those. And anyone who has additional questions from here, uh, please jump into the Q&A function as opposed to the chat function in Zoom uh, so that we can moderate those. Okay. Um, so uh, first question here, what can I do to increase the number of reviews I have? Um, Devin, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, for sure. So if you're a new brand on Amazon, uh, signing up for Amazon's early reviewer program is a great way to start. Uh, their early reviewer program is a great way to get your first five initial reviews on your product listings, uh, which can be very, very challenging to do so as a new brand. It doesn't guarantee that the product reviews um, will be positive or five stars, but at least you're getting those first couple, which is always very important. I would also encourage you to get proactive in your products Q&A section. Um, make sure that you're responding to all questions and providing a positive customer uh, experience and encouraging people to buy. Uh, if you've been established on Amazon for a while, you could sign up for Amazon's Vine program, which is an internal Amazon program to generate more reviews. Another option would be to request a review on all products that have been purchased um, through you on Amazon. So this would require you to actually manually request an additional review email um, every time an order comes through. And uh, another kind of final option would be to launch um, a very thorough email marketing strategy to encourage additional reviews. There are actually third party softwares that will sync into your Amazon account and allow you to run these sort of triggered email marketing campaigns. These are really great for building brand loyalty, um, a positive customer experience and getting additional reviews. Perfect. Um, a question here that we touched on briefly, but someone wondering when will Amazon attribution be available in Canada? So Amazon Attribution, we're really working hard on making it available in Canada. We're hoping for November of this year, um, but we'll of course keep all of our Canadian friends updated once it's rolled out. Thank you. Um, why is it important to drive traffic outside of your Amazon, outside of Amazon to your Amazon listing? I, I oh, sorry, go, you go no, ahead. Go, go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I'm gonna have to moderate the moderation, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I could go first and then Devin, you can kind of tackle on, um, wasn't sure if it was kind of in relation to Amazon attribution, but I think it's just important to kind of have a holistic marketing strategy because people are discovering Amazon products across so many different places these days, whether it be TV or an email newsletter, um, Facebook, Instagram, Google, there's tons of different places that product discovery happens and multiple different touch points in order to kind of build that customer awareness and customer trust. So I think that in regards to just um, building that up so that customers feel ready and comfortable to buy your products um, is, is very important. And so, and always driving more products to your product detail pages in terms of the algorithm. We know that organic search algorithm, we know that a lot of different factors go into it, but it always helps just when people are getting to your product detail pages, when people are searching for products in your category. Yeah, just to add on another point or two there to Danielle's, um, I think what's important to keep in mind is that um, while Amazon is taking up such a large market share these days in consumer buying behaviors online, it may not be the first place that every single consumer might look to buy or consider a new product. So maybe your customers are looking for new products on Google or Bing or Facebook first. And if you're not running ads there and continuing to drive to your Amazon product listings, you might be reaching out on an opportunity um, to reach that audience. Um, to touch on your earlier response, Devin, about um, email campaigns to solicit reviews, someone is wondering if Jungle Scout as a third party software is helpful for that. Definitely. Uh, we use Jungle Scout, Scout a lot internally for that purpose specifically. Um, one of the great ways that I like to use it is that in the requ request a review functionality that I mentioned earlier. Um, 
if you don't integrate Jungle Scout actually into your account to do this, um, you'll have to request a review man manually of every single order that comes through. And if you're a large seller on Amazon, this might just be too con time consuming to have to do. Uh, but with Jungle Scout, it'll allow you to bulk request um, in buckets of say 100 orders at a time. So it's really, really time saving on that front. And it also allows you to set up um, email marketing campaigns uh, to notify users additionally on top of Amazon of when you've received an order, when you've shipped it, and finally to ask again for that, um, that product review at the end and encourage that good customer experience. Excellent. Uh, someone was asking, how do I get the recorded video? Uh, that will be emailed out to you uh, tomorrow at the latest, possibly today, uh, depending on how quickly we can get that set up. Um, here's a question. How can I do keyword research for my products listings on Amazon? Yeah, I have that one, Danielle. Um, so with Amazon's advertising console, you can use automatic PPC campaigns uh, to allow Amazon to place your ads um, where they see search terms that will convert for your listing. Um, from running this campaign, you'll then be able to actually see which search terms converted and add them into the back end of your product listing. You could also use um, the autofill tool in actually the front end Amazon search bar um, to discover new keywords to target. Uh, so all you would do is start by typing major keywords for your product into the search bar on Amazon and see what um, additional keywords appear in the drop down menu. Um, and often that will be a pretty good indication of what are some um, top search for keywords uh, in relation to that primary keyword that you search for. Uh, you can also use third party softwares like Jungle Scout or many others to get really accurate search volume um, by country. Um, and we also, we like to utilize that a lot, especially at the start um, of a product launch um, or a PPC initiative. Cool. Okay, hey, a group of questions that look like they're more focused on attribution specifically. Uh, can I measure YouTube um, and can I measure Google Shopping ads? Yeah, so you can measure um, both YouTube and Google Shopping ads. One thing with YouTube is that they're, they're pretty strict on their impression measurement, but with clicks, um, you can do it if you purchase through Google Ads search. Um, and for Google Shopping, you just have to make sure that you also use Google Ads when you're setting up your campaign in Amazon Attribution. We generate a specific type of tag that enables us to measure Google Shopping ads. Um, so we would recommend when you're set in the setup stage, selecting Google Ads search um, and then implementing it in your shopping ad. Awesome. Um, what is the lag time for reporting data? Um, so it is four to six hours lag for click data and then around 24 hours for conversion data to begin populating. Great. Um, here's another question. What is the attribution methodology? So it is uh, the same one that we use across Amazon advertising. It's a 14 day last touch model. Thanks. Uh, just scrolling through a few more questions here. Um, what are the requirements to participate in Amazon attribution? Um, so currently you just have to be um, selling your products in the US. If you are a seller or vendor, if you're a vendor, we also are available if you sell it on .co.uk. Perfect. Danielle, you're doing really good at these rapid fire. <laughs> rapid fire, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this one uh, is a bit more general. I got an email from Amazon that they're going to limit my FBA inventory unless my inventory performance score goes up. Uh, how do I increase that? Um, maybe Devin, you want to field that one? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so this is something that um, a couple of our clients have experienced as well. Um, your inventory performance score is a compilation of several metrics, which basically indicate how quickly your product moves through the Amazon warehouses. Amazon is looking for your products to basically be in stock at all times, but not to have so much in stock that they sit in the FBA warehouses for long periods without selling. So keeping this um, main definition in mind, to increase your inventory performance score, you'll want to remove any excess inventory that's sitting in the warehouses and not selling. 
um, optimize your product listings to move more products and generate more sales. So looking back to the slides we had in this webinar would be really useful for, for that. Uh, run a promotion or a sale just to, to move more inventory and get more um, out of the warehouses is really great. Resolve any stranded inventory issues, that would also be a good one. Um, and ensure your products are always in stock. So either utilizing Amazon's inventory planning tool or um, a third party inventory planning tool to, um, to support with that will be really beneficial. Great. And I think we're in the final questions here. Uh, this is an interesting one though. Do you recommend having separate product listings or trying to bundle products as much as possible? I can take that one too. Um, so bundling products is a really great way to provide more selection to buyers, um, get more cross sales, get more reviews, um, and get your products ranking higher as a result. Um, often people think that to bundle your products, you should only do so if they vary by color or by size. Um, but really you can look for, um, any reason to try and bundle your products, such as the type of the product or the version, all of those could be good enough reasons to combine those product detail pages. When launching a new product, uh, we even try to launch it as a bundle with an older product to really get the older pro to get the new product um, a leg up in its rankings to start, because that new product will be able to latch on to the reviews and the sales history of the old product, which will help it to get a leg up um, in the auction at launch time. So overall, I would highly recommend um, trying to bundle your products as much as possible. Great. That is all the questions that we have in the Q&A for today. Uh, so with that, we will conclude. Uh, as a reminder, this will be emailed out to anyone who's watching today and anyone who had registered before uh, but was unable to make it. Uh, keep an eye on your inbox for that, as well as the details on the special offer for the free Amazon checkup that we'll be offering through Major Tom's Tin Can Services. Uh, you'll be receiving information on how you can um, take advantage of that, uh, as well as some of those takeaways um, and a few uh, checklists that might help you on your own as well. Uh, thank you, Danielle from Amazon for joining us today and all the support you guys provide us pretty much every day, all day. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Devin, as well, for all of the very insightful information um, that we hope was of value to everyone who joined us today. Thanks for having me, Mitchell. Thanks, Mitchell. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.